we're going. Welcome. It's the 3rd of May. This is the Inclusive Naming Project with the SheCode Africa Contributathon. Thanks for being here. So topics that were on my list was um, how is the search proceeding for inclusive naming targets, for inclusive naming um, repositories that need fixes, and any questions that Peace or Catherine have that we can answer to help you on your way. And now I need to bring up that sheet that we use to track this. It is right here. Okay, so here we've got the sheet. And let's widen it out enough. Okay, good. All right, so I see Catherine, you've already submitted um, several pull requests. Thanks very much. So this, this is one where Kevin, Bruno, and I can now go do some, some reading to be sure that those are ready to be reviewed. Are you okay if we spend a little time reviewing them now, Catherine? Um, yeah, that's okay. Okay, great. And, and Peace, it looks like likewise, you've done the same thing here. You've submitted some pull requests that we could, we could check today and review, if that would be okay. Yes, it is. Okay, so let's let's take one of each and we're going to go through them. We'll use this as, <laughs> excuse me, as a way to as a way to talk about what the change is and why. Okay. Good. All right. So this one says create a job that just builds the oh oh no. Okay, so this one piece, this one is a good one for us to highlight in this case. The word master here is a reference to, um, to a branch name of a repository. So rather than the word controller, I would suggest you might choose to use the word primary or, or main. And the reason I use, use one of those two is, is that it's, it's the branch name of what's being done inside the inside the what do you call it inside the the test itself so now we've got to look at the test and see what the test is actually doing so this is consumer.adoc oh oh good okay so this is documentation thank you so what this says is i think what you want to do here is you want to change this so instead of being controller branch it should be primary or default branch And now let's let, let me look at the text more broadly, just to be sure. I've got to be see the whole context. So we click here, open this to view the file. Okay, so master. Okay, there's a interesting. Okay, so peace. Let's let's look to see. I'm going to go. I'm going to switch and look at the SCM APIs upstream, and the file you were modifying was in docs consumer.adoc, right? Yeah. Okay. And then we have three references. Okay. So there's this one. Create a job that builds the master branch. Create one job each for each of the sustaining branches. Okay, so now, now the question is, yeah, so this one should be changed, but I would change it from master. I think instead of master, I would make it, it and it looks like your pull request did not submit to the upstream repository, it's submitted to your repository. If I yes, read it. The one I thought. Sorry, go ahead, Peace, say that again. I said it's submitted to I forked the repository. So I did the pull request straight from the one I forked already. And and that and doing the pull request from the fork is correct, but the 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 error that's happened and we may want to actually have you to make this change here, 
the, the error that's happened is it's offering to merge into master of your repository. So it's offering to merge into your own repository. And what you want to do is you want the pull request to target the upstream repository, not your own repository. So it's, it's tough to show the picture of this, what that means. Uh, let's, let's look at, let's see, maybe it's easiest if we, if we do that this way. So let's look at find that file, docs, consumer a doc, and, and what I'm gonna do the same, basically the same action you did is I edit the file, now I look for the word master. And okay, this one says builds the main or primary branch. Now, if we look for master again, should branch. So here we could say main, I think. Is that it? There were only two hits for master in this file? I saw three earlier. Yeah, me too. I thought we had three, and yet I don't see a third match. Okay, so we'll, we'll be able to test it. So, so here I've made the edit, and now when I do, okay, use main rather than master, as primary branch name. And the reason is command line git is steadily moving to use more inclusive branch names. Okay, so, and this, the steps that I'm showing so far are steps that you probably already took. The crucial one is it's now going to offer to let me create a pull request. And up here in the top right hand corner, you see this base repository that's shown. It says base repository. Let's see if I can pick it right there. Notice that it says Jenkins CI slash SCM dash API dash plugin. That's the place we want to send this pull request to because if I send it to my own repository, the upstream maintainers will never see it. So Peace, did that make, does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Now, if you're at a computer, we could switch and have you screen share, and we could guide you through making the change to switch where or to do this, if you're willing. Or would you be willing to do that experience? Or are you right not- now, my, my PC is off, but let me see if I can get it. Okay, so so while you're so you'll work on that independently. Are you okay if I then continue and we look at some others? Let's do some more reviews. Or would you like? Okay, okay. we can we can look at others. Why I'm looking for it to Okay, sorry, I'm not sure I understood. So, are you at a computer that you could share your screen? So, if you are, that would be best for me. We then let you go through this and let's get this one prepared. Okay, I said that uh, we can um, look at other plugins oh. while I'm trying to switch on my PC because my PC, the battery is low now. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay, so you're, you're, you're probably just on your phone. So then it's, it's great. Let's go ahead with switch to another one and we won't worry about your PC for now. That's, that's excellent. So let's go with that. So there are several here where the pull request was submitted to your repository. So those, but we can still review them and make comments there to be sure yeah. that you have the right content. So let's do that. Good idea. All right, so yes, this one's perfect. So the one that I see on screen right now is we are probably running on a remote agent and controller. Call back to the controller. Yes, that's, that is correct. So that one needs to be submitted to the upstream, but it is a correct change. Okay, then let's do that again with the credentials plugin pull request. 
And here, il percorso, oh, oh, ok. Questo è italiano e non, non dobbiamo <laughs> tradurre uh, l'italiano. Uh, so this one, I'm going to say no, not because, yeah, not because it's wrong, because actually the word master in this case is not Italian. So, so someone, someone whoever did this translation into Italian put an English word right in the middle of the Italian. So don't... Uh, correct um, local language versions unless you are a native speaker of that language. And I am clearly not a native speaker of, the, of, of Italian, just so we're clear. <laughs> I still had it down. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so good. So we've reviewed we've reviewed three pull requests. Excellent work piece. Thanks for submitting the pull request. That's great. Mark, I want to ask something. If you did something in the other one, you after um reviewing it and you said it was correct, you submitted it again. So okay. you you submitted it to the upstream. Yes. Why was that? Like you sent it back to the Jenkins um, upstream so that they could see it, right? Right. So what you would do, I think, what you would do in your pull request is let's let's see if I can let's see if I can simulate the same thing. Just a minute. I'm not sure I can, but let's try it. Let's. I think I'm going to try the same technique. So let's get a copy of this one. And I'm gonna now go to my fork, just like you went to yours. Okay, so here I am. I am now going to bring in the upstream so that I've got all the, so I click this fetch upstream button and click fetch and merge so that I have everything that the upstream has. That's an important button to remember. Don't forget to use this fetch upstream button regularly. Okay, so now, I'm going to look at the docs, consumer.adoc, and I'm going to edit this. We had found that the word master was, silly thing, master. Okay, so let's just do this one change for now. So I'm gonna change that and use more inclusive language, more inclusive branch name. Uh, the Git project is using more inclusive names for their default branches in new releases tend to prefer main or other choice from the user rather than the pre previous master. Okay, so, and I'm going to create a new branch and Mark, this we're going to, go ahead. Sorry, just a silly question of mine. Uh, are you cutting your comments up to about 80 characters? I, I, I am, yes, good good question. And the GitHub user interface doesn't make that easy, does it? But yes, I am. No, yeah, because you've got the eye. Uh, you know how to cut when it's the right time. Okay, cool. Uh, I guess the display would be better later on if you cut it at 80 characters or just a good habit to have. Well, it's it's different. It's that, that when I'm editing a, a commit message, that's actually going to get mm -hmm. commit messages. There are conventions and standards that the people okay. who use command line get prefer. And their preference is this first line should not exceed 50 characters. And yep. these other lines should not exceed 80. And okay. it's just a preference, but it makes it easier for people to read when they're looking at a git log command. Makes perfect sense, thank you. Uh, do you know uh, if a plugin, 
uh, for Chrome or other browsers would exist uh, so that you don't have to count how many characters you should have? You know, in that's, a, that's a very good question. There probably is. I've never tried to find one, but I think okay. that's a good idea because this this text reflowing that I did is kind of boring, right? It's much, yeah. much easier if, <laughs> if there was a, something that would do that for me. Yes, good. And I don't know of one, but but I bet there is, considering how wide the, the set of things are in the world that do that. Mm -hmm. So good, good point. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna save, save this. So I'm doing a commit to my branch named inclusive-naming. I'm still just getting to the point where you were piece. Notice what it defaulted to. It says, okay, and, and this is what happened to you piece, I think, mm -hmm. is it says, ooh, I'm gonna propose a pull request to my master branch from my inclusive naming branch. And while that's not harmful, if this was the place I wanted to go, it's not the thing that I want. And so, I need to find a way to get this thing to open the pull request to the upstream. How do I do that? Uh -oh. It may be that I it may be that GitHub's hit GitHub is not going to allow me to do it, and I'm going to have to just cancel here Ouch. and do it from the command line, or uh, I'm going to have to, I see, I don't see anything in the UI here that would let me switch to, I, I was hoping this me too. little icon <laughs> there would let me switch to look at other things, but it doesn't seem to. So peace, you may be stuck doing this from the command line. If you'd like, I can show you how to do it from the command line as well. Okay, I would like to see. Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, this remember that we're at this point where we're on my fork of the SCM, CM API and I was trying to create a pull request, but because I started my edits in my fork, it defaults to putting me merge, proposing pull requests only to my fork. So I'm going to bring up a terminal window and we're going to make the text and the terminal window easy enough to read. So do I have SCM API already? I don't. So first things first, I'm going to clone that repository. So gh repo clone Jenkins CI slash SCM dash API dash plugin. Okay, so I just cloned the repository. And now I'm going to do a gh repo fork. And it will say, oh, hey, this already exists. Would you like a remote? I would. There I have it. Now, if I say a git branch minus A, or, yeah, so that tells me here is my branch inclusive naming. So I'm going to do a git checkout minus B inclusive naming minus T origin slash inclusive naming. So what that says is create a local branch named inclusive dash naming that tracks the remote branch origin slash inclusive naming. Okay, so now if I do this, I, I do a get, if I do a get log minus minus graph, it will show me here is that commit I made, whoops. And here is the upstream master. So I'm one commit beyond upstream master. Mark, sorry to interrupt once more. Yes. What would have happened if you hadn't used the minus T uh, on the git command, you know, without the tracking? What, in what state would we have been? I think we would have ended up in the same state with this here and this at the same location. But if there were updates on the remote branch, you wouldn't get them. I okay. might not have received those. Yeah. So that minus T says, try to try to keep, try to follow the remote branch when the updates occur. Good question. Okay. Oh, because I tend to forget the minus T most of the time. <laughs> and, and in most cases, it's perfectly harmless, right? So back to back to Bruno's comment on 80 character lines. I can, now that I'm on my local Linux computer, I can yeah. use the formatting tools that I have here. And now I fit very nicely. 
Okay, so now we've got, if we do the, the graph, if we do the git log, you'll see here's my change. This is equivalent to what Peace did, right? It's, okay, I've got, and we look at what the changes were. It says, create a job that builds the main or primary branch. Now to create the pull request, I say GH PR create. And it asks me what title do I want? It defaults to using the title of the most recent commit. So if you choose a good commit message, you get a good title. Use more inclusive branch name is a fine choice. And then it opens up and offers, would you like to edit the pull request template that is provided with this repository? And I like to use those because the template has been provided by the plugin maintainer for the things they want us to, us to answer before we submit a pull request. So I hit the enter here and I then it says on the body, do you want to edit it or you want to skip? And I want to edit it. And here's what it says. Now, this is a fun difference that Bruno's earlier question is, is a, a good thing to highlight, inclusive naming in the GitHub pull request interface, it actually prefers long lines. <laughs> and so in that interface, I will typically delete all the new lines so that it has these huge long lines because they look better. And then I go through the checklist and you remember how we did the checklist before I put an X to say that I did that. Yes, I'm on a topic or feature branch. Pull request title represents what I wanted. Yep. Describe what you did. Yep, I described what I did. Link to relevant issues. There isn't a relevant issue, so it's okay that I X that. Link to relevant pull requests. There aren't any, so it's okay. Ensure you have provided tests. This one, I'm not providing additional tests. So to help the maintainer, I put these two tilde characters at the front and at the back. What that will do is that draws the line as a strike through so that they know I thought about this and I intentionally chose not to do it. So I'm gonna save that. And now it offers, should I submit? I submit it and it'll tell me the URL. Now, when I open this URL, here is my pull request. It says all the text that I described, the check boxes, and here are the changes. So, piece in order to make the transition, what you'll need to do is you'll need to check out the branch locally and then use GH PR create as a way to create the, the, the pull request. Are you, are you comfortable with that? Yes, I am. I understand. Okay. Thank you. And, and sorry for that surprise, but thank you for being willing. That's great. I'm going to close this one because I don't think that this one is actually I would much rather piece that your pull request be submitted. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this. L A D Y P R O W E S S. Is that right, piece? Yes, it is. Okay, very good. Excellent, thank you. And I'm, I'm gonna delete the branch so that it isn't even around. Good. Thank you, Mark. All right, so that's, that's a good step. So we've got several of those. Catherine, I propose we look at yours, if that's okay. We've, we've got another chance to look at more. Yeah, sure, we can go ahead with my. Okay. So replace master with controller in Javadoc. Yes, that's correct. Yes, that's correct. Yes, excellent. Okay, and submitted to the upstream repository. Oh, oh, now interesting. This, this is a fun one, Catherine. Okay. Because I thought this plugin uh -huh. Was just an API plugin that was bundling other plugins, bundling bundling other jar files. But what okay. you've shown us is that there is obviously code in the io.jenkins.plugins.http client. I you showed me something I did not know. Thank you very much. So so I thought 
usually, so these plugins that have API in their name, like this mm -hmm. one does, are okay. typically used to package something else that is mm -hmm. provided by another group. So in this case, Apache HTTP components. And usually this is just a bundling activity that something gets bundled and included into Jenkins, but it's an easier way to bundle it. But in this case, I was wrong. It is that this thing is really providing some of its own code. Thank you. Yeah, this, okay. is, this is absolutely correct. Uh, I have a question. I, I think that um, Catherine did something to the master branch to her own master branch shouldn't we have another branch Ooh. instead Ooh, of right. master it right. may be just a detail but no no you're right very good point that we missed this checklist item yeah because it's easier for the maintainers if we submit from a branch that is not the master branch good good point thanks bruno go ahead so catherine do you understand bruno's point yeah i understand Okay. So great. what I needed to do here is create create my own branch instead of committing to the master branch, right? Correct. Right. Okay. Exactly. Mark, uh, what if we hadn't um, approved the um, pull request and just created another branch from a master? How would Catherine would get rid of what she did to the master branch? Can she revert what she has done or not? She, she, she could get rid of it pretty easily. It, it usually revert is usually not the preferred technique. Actually, it's a good, Bruno makes a very good point, Catherine, in terms of one of the reasons why we don't commit to the master branch is because we want the master branch in our fork to always be either equivalent to the upstream master or behind it. We never want to get ahead of the upstream master because if we get ahead of it, we will have conflicts when we conflicts or problems when we try to bring in changes from the upstream. Okay. So yeah, good good point, Bruno. So Thank you. now is is it correctable? Yes, it's easily correctable. Um, you probably won't do other changes in this repository. I assume this was the only change you found needed to be made, Catherine. Is that correct? Yes, it's the only change, and I made it um, through the UI. I didn't need to uh, to create a local branch. Good, good. And so, so that means when you do that, all you need to do is choose that checkbox that says create a new branch, rather than going right to the master branch. Yes, good. when you do the commit, you mean? Yes, right, when you do the commit. So when you do the, the step that we did here, on this one, there was a, a a box that said, would you like to commit to the master branch or would you like to create a new branch? And I created a new branch named inclusive-naming. Yeah, so that's what you'd need to do as well. But, but for this, I think it should be okay. The maintainers should be able to accept it as is. Good, thank you. Any, any other comments for this particular pull request before we review our next pull request? I don't. Okay, next one then. <laughs> Token macro plugin. Oh, this is this is a good one because one of the maintainers of oh, and it's already been merged. I made, yeah, I made the same mistake. All right. <laughs> I'm, well I'm glad because the maintainer, Alex Earl, that you see here was one of the original people who, prom who promoted and actively encouraged us to switch to more inclusive naming. So I'm okay. proud that he chose to do that. Oh, and he made a change. Okay, good. Yes. Okay. Great. Excellent. Okay. So let's look at next durable task. Okay. Eight. Okay. So eight changes. So did you do this one locally then, or did you do this one from the GitHub UI, Catherine? Yes, I did this locally. Okay, good. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So let's look at it. Okay. And this one, I think I think this one we have to retain because I believe that's the plugin identifier. Okay. Or, 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 oh, 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 no, oh, okay. This is a change log. Okay. I would propose a different, slightly different renaming 
for 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 grammatic for linguistic reasons so they they the previous change log used the plugin id which is not well known to users and is unchanging is unchanging even for yeah, for inclusive naming. Let's use the plugin name rather than the identifier. And when I say that, what I mean is on plugins.jenkins.io, so if I search here for ssh-slaves, it tells me the current preferred plugin name is SSH build agents. So let's put that like that. Now, Catherine, are you comfortable with why I, I, I dared to make that as a suggestion? I know that makes sense. Though I have a question. Um, okay. The SSH slave, it also referred to other sections of um, this particular plugin. Um, and, and it referred to, how can I put it? Um, I think it was Java code, if I remember correctly. So I was having a bit of a conflict with this. Um, Good, well, and logs, okay. it, it seemed like it needed to change, but then again, you have the code issue. Right. So let's let's look at those and let's let's talk through them. I think you've you've presented places where a human being has to think about these these proposed changes and has to make a, a choice. Right. So so let's let's keep looking. So now, did you did you 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 are those included in this or is that one that you didn't make a change for as a result? Yes, I did. I did not make a change. Okay. All right. Well, so then, then let's finish this code review and we will. Okay. So here in, we usually use a lowercase letter, lowercase rather than uppercase inside us, inside the sentence, because in, in this case, it's not in, in English grammar, it's not a proper noun. So we want to use a lowercase there. This one got it right. This one, lowercase. Okay. Okay, this one, this one, because it's in the POM file, that's a plugin identifier. And therefore we need to keep that one as it is. It's also not displayed to users generally. So that's an identifier. Now we should have seen that the build failed on this, the CI build should have failed on this one. So maybe we take a look at that in a little bit just to confirm. Okay. And one of the one of the benefits of the CI jobs is if you inadvertently make a change to something that shouldn't be changed, oftentimes it will fail the, the, the build process because you made a change to something that that was to, had to keep be kept in that name. Okay. Whoops. All right, here. Okay, good. Yes, yes, there you go. You did the exact right thing. Slave agent. Should we call it slave, 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 slave agent? <laughs> no, it's enough to just say agent. Good, very good. Maybe it's the master agent? No, there's no such concept. It's just agent. Well done. Okay, and here we'd switch to the lowercase. Now, one of the one of the the benefits of these review comments is, Catherine, you can then go in once I submit the review, and you can accept the changes. Um, it's actually pretty easy to accept the changes. So let's do a finish review. Um, I think I should request changes. In general, I I, I don't. I usually just say approved. 
minor change, minor improvements. All right. Now, Catherine, you, you said there was a case where you had seen something that was not, that you did not make a change to it. Yeah, um, just search for slave. I'm sure we'll get it. Um, okay, so, okay. so this one could be changed, but it's just, it's a comment inside the code. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, oh. Interesting. This is a little scary. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Okay. So what this is, mm -hmm. is a test. So it won't be shown to users. So it wouldn't have to change. But the danger is, I'm not sure that that's the right name. Because we stopped using that name for agent images a very long time ago. So, so this one wouldn't change as part of the inclusive naming project. What this shows is this is some really outdated code. So it should fail uh, when building. Well, no, because the, the image still exists. The image with that old oh, name still okay. exists, but it is really, really old. At least I think this is really, really old. We'd have to look more detail. So, so that one is okay, but it's okay for the, for the wrong reason. So should we find an issue? Do you know the name of the new image that replaces a slave image? Yeah, I would have to go do some research okay. to find what thing would fit here because that, I think this should now be the SSH agent and it uses a, 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 a different numbering scheme as well, if I remember right, for release numbers. So okay. we'll, we'll have to, it will, it will need some more looking. The last time it has been updated was two years ago, say ah, Docker Hub. That, okay. that makes sense, right? All right, so, so any questions so far? So Catherine, did we detect the case that you were worried about in that search or did I miss it? Yes, we did actually. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, we did. All right. Okay, so we've completed the review of that one. Now let's go. Back to okay, durable there's, tag. Um, there's another one that uh, I wanted clarification on. If you could go back to the sheet, the Git plugin. Um, ah, very good. Uh, <laughs> Excellent the choice. Famous finding, Git plugin. <laughs> finding okay. something so, that causes uh, Mark Waite personal guilt. I like that. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, you just so, scroll back up. We had made, um, yeah, the one that says this is a fork. Uh, plugin. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So when I was trying to create a local copy, um, I was having issues with um, with with aligning with uh, with trying to fork it to my own um, GitHub because, as you can see, the Git plugin seems to have been forked from Hudson. Git Correct. Plugin. Good. Okay. Yeah, so I was having issues trying to clone and fork from my local. Environment. And now, when you when you did the clone and fork, was were you doing that from the gh command line, or were you were you doing that from the GitHub interface from the web page? Um, GH. GH. Okay, so let's yeah. do that from gh if that's okay then. Okay. So so and and because this may not match with with your experience, because I've already got a fork of the Git plugin that I can't delete, but we're going to go ahead and do it from here for right now anyway. So first thing was gh repo clone Jenkins CI slash git dash plugin is, do you remember is this, did you use a gh repo clone to get your initial copy? Yes. Okay, good, so let's do that. And then I'm going to CD to Git plugin. And now I'm going to say GH repo fork. And it's going to present a question, I think. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and is this the question it presented to you as well? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Thank you. That's good. I like that. All right. So, so what that means is now I have to use the arrow, the up and down arrow keys to choose which is the base repository. 
And so I'm going to choose Jenkins CI Git plugin. And it says, okay, that exists. Would you like to add a remote? Yes. Remote. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the exact error I was getting. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's cool. So what you found <laughs> is a bug in GH. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so now what you need to do, Catherine, is submit uh -huh. a bug report to GH. You, the, GH is an open source project, and they would okay. be, I'm sure, more than happy to have your bug report. What you need to do is describe the exact sequence of steps. We'll have this on video, so you can even, if you want, point okay. them to the video recording of this exact point in the video recording and say, look, you can watch Mark wait fail in this way. <laughs> I'll not do that, but I'll. Hey, I'll I, you should, I, definitely. I think it's quite persuasive when you can say, look, I failed this way and here's somebody else who failed this way and here's a video of them failing. <laughs> I mean, the, the developers who see the bug report may say, oh, it's already a known bug or whatever. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Or, or they may actually smile and say, well, why didn't, you, why didn't the Jenkins project break that fork? And then you smile back at them and say, because it's hard work, we have to beg your support people to do it for us. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So, so now, how do, do, you, do you want to know how to resolve this, how to fix this problem? Yes. Okay, so git remote minus v. So it has origin and it has upstream. So that's good. And it's got the wrong upstream. Oh my sakes. Yes. <laughs> okay. This is where I got stuck, actually. And, and and well, you should get stuck. That's 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 so completely wrong as to be dismaying how wrong that is. All right. So git remote. So so what, what GH did is apparently GH said, oh, you asked to clone a repository that has a fork. Therefore, I'm going to give you the, the clone and I'm going to give you the upstream automatically. And okay. so what we have to do is we need to fix this by first we're going to get remote RM upstream because we don't want that upstream at all. That's the wrong upstream. So we don't want it. And okay. then the thing that is our upstream is actually misnamed right now. It's called origin. So we're going to do a git remote rename origin upstream. I think it's rename. We'll see if it likes that. Now, when I do a git remote minus V, it says I've got a thing called upstream this. Now, are you okay if I do an experiment just to try something? That's okay. I'm, I'm going to go back one step. I'm going to get remote rename upstream back to origin. Okay, so now what do I have? I have something that says origin is named this. I'm going to try to use GH repo fork now. Ha! Okay. Oh. So in your bug report to the GH project, you can also tell them, and here's a workaround. Yeah. <laughs> the workaround is change to the repository directory and delete the upstream that okay. GH mistakenly created. And, and, and they'll probably say, hey, that wasn't a mistake and we did it intentionally. And, and I'm okay with that, but, but you're now giving them a workaround and other people who encounter the same problem, particularly fatal remote upstream already exists that you put in your bug report, yeah. um, we'll find with Google search, fatal remote upstream already exists and be able to see your workaround. Okay. So did that, did that answer you the question? Yeah, that did. That did. Thank you. Good. All right. Okay. That was, that was fun, by the way. Thank you. And now, now you're reminding me, I really do no. need to go ask them to delete this. Yes, go ahead. Question, please. I have a question. Go ahead. Okay. Um, aside the method that was used just now to fetch that upstream, to um, clone that repository, is there any other method? There is. The one? Yeah. yeah. And in fact, the other one is the one I commonly use. So, so the other method of cloning the upstream repository is to use command line git directly. And so that would be with git clone Usually, even when I'm cloning an upstream, I'll use HTTPS, 
github.com, jenkinsci, git-plugin.git. So now that I've done that, when I cd to git, git plugin, if I do a gh repo fork, it will ask me the same question, which is the base repository? I say Jenkins CI, would you like to add the remote? Yes. And there it worked. So because I did git clone instead of doing gh repo clone, it didn't, git clone doesn't know anything about GitHub's concept of upstream and downstream. So it just cloned the, re the repository. So yes, git clone is another way to do it. And in this case, would not exercise that bug or that feature of GH. Did that answer your question, Peace? Yes, yes, it does. Excellent. Okay, good. Very good. Thank you. All right, so are we ready to go on to review some more pull requests? Um, yeah, uh, just a heads up before we move on. There's mm -hmm. one plugin I, I mentioned there that it doesn't have a GitHub repo. Oh, which one is that? Okay. It's the Ace Editor. Yeah, the Ace Editor. Oh, interesting. Okay, so that may indicate something's wrong with things because it certainly should have a... So you're saying, oh, it does not. Oh, oh, oh wow. Oh, now that's cool. Okay, so there isn't a link here to the GitHub edit to the GitHub repository, and yet I am quite confident that there is a GitHub repository. Notice the the how long ago it was last released. It was eight years ago, and so now the question is, oh oh, ah look, all right, this is somewhat exotic, and sorry about <laughs> something exotic like this. It says here, this is the ACE editor module bundle. See Jenkins JS modules. Oh no, I don't know. I've, I'm not, okay, let's, are you okay if we spend a little bit of time looking for this? Because something that was last released six years ago may well have many uses of master in it. Yeah, sure. Mm. Okay, so let's, let's go looking. Let's see if we can find this thing. All right, so Ace Editor is the name of it. Okay, so my first hunch is there is a Jenkins repository named Ace Editor. So I'm going to go searching for repositories. Ace. Okay, there it is. Now, it's not called Ace Editor, or I think that's it. Let's check it to see. It's called Jenkins Ace Editor. It is now read only. Okay, so we can't release a new thing from a read only repository. So, so we'll have where to fork it. Yeah. yeah, but where, but, but if we needed to do a release because there was a bug, well, it seems can't. like there has to be, and, and this is certainly a currently shipping plugin. So I'm, I'm suspicious this may not be the thing we want. So, so. Oh. I have to give you extra points, Catherine, for finding an interesting problem that is probably going to need some more research to figure out what's going on. So let's see what else we might, where else we might find it. Okay, so Ace Editor here. Bundle ID. Jenkins Workflow Editor for, okay. So where is interesting okay so let's go look at the open issues in jira maybe okay the component here is called js-modules so there's the component so let's try js-modules as this thing so jenkins js modules and do we have such a thing in Jenkins CI? Okay, so we do, and it's not archived. Uh, would it mean that it's um, the ACE editor is now part of the JS modules? Um, That's my people? guess, and, okay. and we should be able to we should be able to find that. 
by looking for ace editor here. Now, this is a fork, and so it may tell me it's not indexed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But so it, it's, it's not written that it's not indexed. It, it, it is not, and yet let's go looking just to make some more wild guesses here. Okay, come on, come on. Okay, here we are, JS modules and module bundle. Jenkins modules. I don't see it there. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to fork and clone. I'm going to clone this thing so that we can look at it locally because I truly don't know. This this has me perplexed. So git clone that thing. Get grep ace editor. If this defines it, nope. So that's not it. So Catherine, I think we're just going to have to do some separate research to figure out where is the source code to ace editor. Okay. I'm sure someone knows where it is, but I don't. Okay. Good, that's okay. good discovery. Good, good, good discovery. Let me put a note here. Mark wait to research where the source code is. The source code location. Yeah, very good. Excellent. Any other questions before we close? We're almost out of time Time here. Yes, um, Mark, please. I want you to help me for something. Help us do something. Like, um, can you show us how to um, comment on different um, this thing? Well, can we um can you show us how to drop different comments on different um file? Sure. So comments in terms Just of comments on pull, pull requests? Request. Yes. On pull requests. You bet. Yeah. Okay. So so we just did that. Well, I don't mean locally, I mean directly from the directly from the um GitHub repository. So using the web pages, how to comment on a pull request? Did I understand your question, Peace? I mean, the GitHub repository directly for me, it's not um, cloning it locally, like directly using the GitHub repository. Is there a way we can comment on multiple, make multiple changes at the same time and then create one pull request for them? Ah. I, I suspect there may be a way to do that. I just don't, I am not, I am not confident that I can show you how um, because I'd need to do some more research. I've never successfully done a multi-file change from the GitHub web page using a single, using using everything from GitHub. But but now just to just to tell you that I believe it's possible. Let me show you a pull request where I think someone else did it. So in Jenkins.io, there's a pull request here that was just merged yesterday. That is the CI CD with Postman and Jenkins blog post. This blog post was done by this user Andy dash get Postman. And notice that this comment says, add files via upload. So I think this is a multi-file pull request that was created by this user andy-postman or andy-get-postman from the GitHub web UI because I would never put a comment on, on my commits of files that says add files via upload. I suspect that is a GitHub addition. So I think it must be possible but it may have to wait to show it for another session so I can learn how to do it. Would that be okay, Peace, if we did it in another session? Yes, it will, because I feel that would be much more easier when there are multiple comments to make on a particular repository. Good, good point for these kind of text changes, why not? So let's, let's plan for that. Is it okay if it waits a week? Or do you want to do you want us to, to meet again sooner than that so that you can see it sooner? 
Yes, if there is a way we can meet sooner. Okay. So what if, let's look for a, a time that would work for us. What if we were to try to meet, well, what, how would tomorrow at this same time work for you? Would that, would that work for you okay, Peace, if we did it tomorrow? It will, it will, because I'm really interested in learning this particular aspect. Okay, so let's plan for another meeting tomorrow at this same time. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can check my business calendar. So just a minute, let me double check that I'm not promising to attend a meeting that my business schedule won't allow me to attend. Okay, so if we I meet saw, tomorrow. Sorry, I saw you change the time to 8 p.m. Oh, I did? When did I change the time to 8 p.m.? Oh, dear. I, don't know. I, don't know. I, I saw like you changed on the calendar. Oh, maybe. That, and if I did, that would not be a very good thing. So next week, I've got us at 4 p.m. UTC and the following week. So I don't think I shifted them. But but what I was going to do is I was going to schedule a session for tomorrow at this exact same time. Would that be okay for you, Catherine, as well? Yeah, that's okay. And and Catherine, you don't actually have to attend if you if you don't wish to. There's no, no requirement. In fact, I need to make us start 30 minutes later and we'll limit ourselves to 30 minutes because okay. I've got a colliding meeting tomorrow. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll create a, I'm going to actually adjust this. Well, yeah, I'll get us a meeting scheduled for tomorrow at the same time, same time plus 30 minutes so that we can go through it. Would that be all right? That's okay with me. Yes. Great. All right. Thank you to both of you. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.